Okay, welcome to this uh, lecture on economic edge of empowering patient education. We have been discussing a lot on the care outcome effect of patient education and also the quality of life. Today we will discuss about the economic edge of empowering patient education. I am Dr. Tom K. Thomas. Associate Professor and Head of the Department, School of Public Health, SRM University, Sikkim in India. Let us try to understand the patient empowerment. Patient empowerment talks about decision making about care choices, first of all. How patients are involved in making care decisions, usually in many contexts. The healthcare decision, because of many inherent reasons, decisions are made by, unlike in other markets, the purchase decisions are made by the providers. The supplier themselves are, are the decision makers. So who decide the care choices? What are the choices which are available to a patient? And who make this decision? And are these decisions informed or it is, it is uh, deli just delegated or just told? Usually most of the time in healthcare, decisions are just told and there is no choices given for the patient. Then decision on when to seek care and from where, what kind of care. So these are all the other, other levels of uh, decision making of, and uh, the empowerment. And what provider needs to be accessed? Patient needs to decide when, uh, when there is a health issues. The decision about the provider itself is a big tough. For example, countries like India or many other Asian countries, we have multiple kinds of solutions for a particular illness. Not only within uh, one medicine tree, we have multiple medicine tree, starting from allopathic English medicine, we call it, to a range of other options. So which option needs to be followed? And how patient decide on what kind of solutions are the best? And who make this solution, that solution available to them? So the first of all, decision about care choice is very important. The patient empowerment talks about how patients can be involved in this make decision making. That is level one. And when we move on to the next level, knowledge about the choice. Okay, fine, we have been, patients are given the choices. Now how patient decide on this choice? Do they have adequate information, adequate knowledge about decision making? Because in health economics, we call healthcare markets are asymmetrical markets, which means there is a difference in terms of information available to the patient as well as the information available to the providers, healthcare providers, including doctors, hospitals. So there is lot of information that the provider knows, but the receiver, who are the patients, may know very little. So how we enhance the knowledge of patients? So how we make sure that patients have adequate knowledge while choosing the care options, which will also have a lot of effect on health. Often the first choice, first decision, for example, to decide on what kind of uh, healthcare stream needs to be accessed, for example, whether it is homeopathy or whether it is allopathy or whether it is Ayurveda or whether it is Yunani, what kind of options need to be followed has a very important effect on the health of the patient or the outcome, quality, I, I should say the quality of life. So the knowledge about the choice is something very important and the first choice to be the best one in terms of economic terms, 
require patients to have adequate knowledge about the choice. So to control the finances in terms of countries where the financing mechanisms are very poor, where patients have to pay a lot of money from own pocket, the decision is very crucial because it involves a lot of cost. The stream of care that the patient choose has a significant effect on the cost. So how to control these costs? So for controlling the cost, patient needs to be involved in the choice making and also they need to be adequately knowledgeable about the choices. So usually all this choice, decisions and knowledge usually are not accessible in many healthcare situation, health systems or many countries. For example, many of the Asian countries, especially countries in the South and also many countries which are which have very good uh, social uh, health system, social health care system, social financing system, where the population is covered by a universal health coverage. Even in those situations, their wrong decision can probably may not influence the cost of the patient, but it has a lot of influence on the health system and also the budget allocation. We have seen in this in the time of the COVID. We will see that later. Then the autonomy of the patient. So once we move from decision about the care choices, then we talk about how far the patient is knowledgeable about making decisions. And the third, we talk about autonomy of the patient, freedom of the patient to choose. Okay, you have given, there are many health, many providers which provide choices. But ultimately, in health economics, there is also something called pushing factors. Pushing factors means the provider can push the user to avail certain healthcare services. Because of the asymmetry of information, we have already seen there is a significant asymmetry in terms of health information between the provider and the patient. So because of that, how far patient has the freedom to choose, freedom to choose require a lot of knowledge. So how clinical decisions are made, do patient have freedom and ability to choose between different options? Are they free to choose? In many healthcare contexts, patients may not have the freedom to choose. For example, critical, critical ill patients, critically ill patients or patient who met with an accident or, or patient who don't have adequate income, for example, patient who have a frontal go treatment like oncology, cancer care, uh, uh, renal failure patients. So there are significant amount of uh, freedom which is available. However, because of the knowledge gap, patient may not be able to make a rational decision. Rational decision means where the satisfaction level is high. Patient as a consumer will be always rational, like the provider will be rational in terms of making maximum profit out of one care cycle. So, so the optimization of the satisfaction in terms of the outcome, both in terms of cost and also in terms of the quality of life. So how best we can have the quality, best quality of life with the minimum cost. So autonomy of patient, patient freedom to choose and how identifying the risk and risk factors, what to do during this risk, all these are also very important. Then third, we talk about ability to manage expenses. Knowledge on financial, various financing options. So patient empowerment, when we talk about, we talk about multiple, multi-dimensional, which is not just about the ability of patient to be able to take part in the decision-making, but patient be a, being a stakeholder in the entire healthcare process of the patient. So patient empowerment has many 
dimension many angles. So when we talk about the economic edge of empowering patient education, we talk about two levels. One is individual or household level and the health system level. At the household level or the individual level, the maximum quality of life is the goal of any patient. And along with that, how far the out-of-pocket expenditure or the health spending can be reduced. So, as we already have seen, minimum of spending and maximum of quality of life. So, economic edge has a relationship to how far a patient is able to save on a hospital visit or a consultation or a diagnostic or how patients are able to decide on when to consult, when to go to the hospital, what kind of services needs to be accessed. There are many instances I have seen that if you, you can go with a headache to a neurologist and with the same headache, you can go to a physician also, general medicine. If you, if a patient go with a headache to a neurosurgeon or a neuromedicine neurologist, the cost will be very different because he wanted to rule out all the other possible options. It could be starting from brain tumor to probably a simple headache. So the treatment starts from the perspective of a specialist. So in India, we can go to any, doc any doctor, unlike in other uh, contexts, other European contexts, where you have a system of general practitioner to the medical colleges. In countries like India, the problem is we can go with a headache or a normal fever even to a medical college. Even to a specialist, medical colleges are supposed to be uh, referral centers even in our country, but if a patient go with headache to a medical college, they have to provide treatment. So the choice that a patient may have a very significant impact on the cost on the patient and also on the health system. So the goal of health system, so there are two dimensions, one is individual level or the household level or and at the health system level. So, as we have seen, at the individual level, the goal is to reduce reduction in the out-of-pocket and reduction in the personal spending for health while getting the highest quality of life. So that requires, like we have seen, different dimensions of patient empowerment and empowered patient or a patient who has adequate information about his disease about his health issues and is able to make decisions, identify risk, identify problem, and to relate to the most appropriate solution can probably get a very high quality of life with very minimal spending. So health system, on the other hand, goal is basically good health the output of entire spending of government for healthcare is to achieve better health or good health for the entire population. So there also the cost factor is involved. We have seen the same in times of COVID. Even now we, the whole world is experiencing. How even, even in times of, in terms of COVID, the patients who were able to best, best manage COVID were the one who were able to manage symptoms. Mean who were able to track the progression of symptoms. So if you don't have, if you are not able to track the progression of, the, of your symptoms or identifying the significance of different symptoms and how it reflect in the uh, quality of uh, human body or what are the changes happens because of this symptom, probably people will end up in more complications. So early management of symptoms 
early identification of symptoms and addressing those symptoms. These are all very important. So in terms of health system perspective, they, there is a very important economic edge because government have a lot of other priorities. Healthcare is a priority, however, uh, putting additional budget to health spending might be very difficult because there are a lot of other priorities. So, good health or bad health? Bad health can produce a lot of economic impact. We have seen during COVID, many countries are still unable to come up of the economic shock which created out of the health problem. So, the knowledge, the patient ability, patient's importance, is very significant in health system in terms of cost. So, creating a population with health literacy, but important we talk beyond health literacy. People are talking about health education, health literacy, health knowledge, but empowering is little bit beyond that, where patients are seen as part of the health system not as consumers, not as users. They are also stakeholders, a very important stakeholder who know how to behave when a health issue happens and how to identify. So care decisions have a lot of financial implications, which can be regulated if patient has adequate knowledge in terms of what to decide. So we have already seen this in the first slide, when to seek health care, time of care. So, at the uh, disease cycle, every illness has a cycle, starting from viral illness, even COVID has a cycle, starting from the symptoms to, may not be starting from the symptoms, starting from the infection to the complete cure. Or if it is a COVID entering of exposure to a COVID positive, till the uh, cure of becoming that patient negative. So that's the cycle. It could be five days, 12 days, 15 days, because in the initial days it was around more than even more than one month to two months because patient had a lot of other health issues. So when we have to seek health care, whether we should go with the just normal symptoms to a hospital. I have seen people, for example, my own case, my father who has a uh, he's a diabetic and he has a physician in another city where we are not living, where we live. So that city is around uh, uh, one hour travel from my home. So since we don't have a own vehicle at our home, so we he has to rent out taxi. So it costs almost twenty dollars just to reach the hospital. So twenty dollars plus associated so many costs. And at the hospital, he may have to spend money for. Um, for consultation, for drugs, for investigation, all these things. So if avoiding a visit itself is a lot of cost. So in case of health seeking, when to seek healthcare, that decision itself is a very important decision which has a lot of financial implications. What point of illness care needs to be sought? And where to seek care? I, we have already seen where means the facility choice. Not only facility choice, facility choice as well as the choice of the physician sometimes. In countries like Finland where you have a very good system of, uh, um, of health centers and many other countries you have excellent system of general practitioners. There's a, there's a line of treatment. But in our, our context, for example, many Asian countries, we, have, we don't have that kind of a 
a hierarchical system of uh, of care see so it's up to the patient to decide what needs to be sought what needs to be purchased in economic terms the purchasing depends on the patient and there are a lot of factors involved in purchasing of health care services either a doctor or a medicine or a diagnostic all involve purchasing or purchasing various services so from where do you purchase this you can purchase from a five star hotel and for example you can have tea from a five star hotel and from a small restaurant or even at home all these three are tea only tea or coffee only so but this the from where you drink a tea or a coffee depends on so many factors so purchasing has a lot of uh, other factors which decide purchase similarly in healthcare also seeking healthcare also is a very important decision and there are so many options to purchase healthcare and what provider to be chosen what kind of self care option what can be done at home and a wrong facility as i have already mentioned wrong facility can sometimes drain the whole money so or usually what happen many time if you go to a wrong facility they will take all your money and once your money is finished they probably will refer you to a higher facility or a different facility or they will say that this is not curable so the time of seeking and decision about from where that seek care need to be purchased is very important and what kind of care the solution what to choose from the available various options wrong solution has various implications on both cost as well as well being quality of life also is very much implied and very much uh, influenced by the kind of care so so quality of life declining mean that also has a cost element if your morbidity days increases because of your poor well being it has a lot of economic effects on the family and also on the health system like we have seen in the previous slide there is a significant effect on the productivity so economic contribution of a particular person because of the wrong health seeking can have a lot of impact on household economy as well as the economic status of the entire country or the or a community or a local economy so these three are very very important from the perspective of health seeking or purchasing of health care and there the patient knowledge plays a very important role now the patient have the knowledge which is empower which will empower them to make these decisions so empower imparting just a knowledge and giving a knowledge which empower them to be self reliant to what the autonomous to be uh, positive stakeholders in healthcare is very very important so there there comes the importance of empowering patient education knowledge is money not only in the context of healthcare in our context when you go for purchasing anything if you are not aware about the at least some kind of knowledge you don't have suppose that person who did not have tea ever in his life he may not know what is tea so maybe people can give coffee and say that it is tea so that is something that sometimes happen in health system where patient may not have even seen many of the things that they purchase for example a stent which is placed in the inside the body or maybe uh, a pacemaker or maybe some other uh, some other procedure that is done inside patient pay but patient may not know what happened so knowledge is basically money so choice the what we have discussed initially when we make choice between different products different options 
and deciding to purchase certain options, certain products. For example, if a patient with heart disease is suggested for uh, angioplasty, and angioplasty hospital could say that whether we should go for angioplasty or something else is a very important decision. But again, it has a lot of implication on cost. If you go for angioplasty or open heart surgery or whatever, so patient inform patient knowledge has a very important outcome. So an average uh, that's a very different issue, but it's also very important. And we purchase many things we purchase we, without even seeing what we purchase in healthcare. So on an average, as we have already seen, average consultation in India costs two hundred like 3 euro to 12 euro, which is a huge money. 1,000 rupees is the one day wage of a, uh, of a high income laborer, skilled laborer, or I should say two days wage of a nurse. So, plus this is just the hospital cost, direct cost. There are a lot of other entire costs like wages, loss of wages, travel costs, like as I have mentioned about my father's case where he spent almost 24 euro just for traveling. So the decision has a lot of implication on cost. Apart from that, each consultation will attract new medicine. Probably when you consult doctor in a health facility, there is high chance that some new investigation will be written, maybe follow-up investigation will be written, maybe they will force you to do some investigation because as a patient, always when we visit a health facility, we are supposed to listen to the doctor and do whatever he say, no other option. So that spending also is a very important spending. And avoiding consultation because of an empowering patient knowledge, because of patient empowerment, it's a huge money. Not only the 200 rupees or 3 euro or 12 euro, but a lot of impact on the economy. Like his productivity also goes. You may have to take leave, go to the hospital. Then time, the whole day, wages also. Maybe somebody else have to go with him. If it is in our context, at least one person accompany every patient. Independently going to the hospital is very less. Maybe less than 1% of the patient go around to consult. In most cases, at least 2 person goes. Even if it is a very simple procedure. For example, even if the, if the landfill procedure where you have to remove your teeth, even for that, at least two person goes. So two persons revenue, two persons income, two person time, two person travel, two person food. All this has a cost. So avoiding that means a saving, a large save. So avoiding a consultation is itself is a huge save. So if you want to minimize the consultation, minimize the hospital visit, minimize the number of times that we go to hospital, we see doctor, we need an empowerment in terms of our health issues, our knowledge about the health problem, what kind of action can be taken independent or by self. And a lot of financial burden on household and health system. There are many studies which say that cost of diagnosed diabetics have risen to $327 billion to to $45 billion in 2000, sorry, sorry. It was 2012 to $245 billion, which has increased to $327 billion. Diabetes is a very important global problem. It's the, the, the report by American Diabetics Association. Diabetes is worldwide is becoming a very big problem where patients have a very important role. Medicine, more than medicine, there are so many things patients can do to improve their quality of life and minimize the hospital visit. People with diagnosed diabetes incur average medical expenditure 
of $16,752 a year, which is almost the, in, in, in Indian context, this is almost, I think, the salary of five or six nurses. So, most of these expenses is associated with diabetics. Many other diseases are higher financial burden. Inpatient care increases. 30% of the total medical cost is hospital inpatient care. Prescription and medication to treat complications. Anti-diabetic agents and diabetic suppressors. So these are different categories of how much is the cost for this diabetic which is incurred. So a lot of spending is made on inpatient care. Inpatient care is because of patients are not able to manage the uh, disease. So that involves a lot of uh, cost. Now reduction in cost, how, where are, which are the drivers where we can really take a control if we have adequate knowledge, empowered knowledge. One is reduction in hospital visits. We have already seen that. And hospital visit itself is a very big cost. Not only really the direct cost in terms of medicine diagnostic, there's a huge indirect cost. Then managing complications. Managing complications in a way can minimize the hospitalization cost. If diabetics result in complications, the costs exponentially increase. For example, treatment for diabetic food or high values of diabetics where you need to have uh, inpatient admitted care. So it involves a lot of expenditure. In India, one day hospitalization itself could result in 500, uh, 300, 300 to 500 dollars a day in a day, which is probably sometimes half a month earning for the deceased. Half a year, not a half a month, half a year earning of the deceased, which you spend for managing complications because patient is not aware about how to manage the complications. Then avoiding hospitalization. If you know how to manage how complications, hospitalization can be avoided. Then choosing the time to visit doctors. Avoiding hospitalization has two implications. Why I have put avoiding hospitalization in two different contexts? One is in terms of patient ability, patient uh, saving from finances. And there is also a large savings by the health system. Because in countries like India, there are a lot of, the hospitals are overloaded with patients. Even, even in the European context or, or Canada or take the case of any countries which is funded by public money, tax funded health system. So if you are overloaded by patients who do not require certain kind of care, Probably it will affect the care of other patients. This is happening in many third world countries where many diseases which could have been controlled or managed by self, even those diseases are coming to the specialists who do not have any, I mean, who may not require treating a very simple disease, which will also increase. Seeing a specialist is much more costly, much more expensive, and consultation fee itself is very expensive. So, empowering knowledge, because of all these factors, empowering knowledge has a lot of implications on cost selection. Empowering knowledge, managing growing indirect expenditure, like morbidity related costs, reduce productivity, employment days, reduce productivity of unemployed. Employed as well as employed. Inability to work, low output, revenue loss to the government. So I am not going the 
into the numbers which I have stated. You can go through the slide. So it's a huge amount. If we talk about the cost to the individuals and cost to the health system, which is huge. So if we focus more on patient empowerment in terms of they're making them able and to be a very important part of the system, there's a lot of advantage for the, the health system as well as the individual. Empowering patient education also has cost reduction possibilities in low and middle income countries, for particularly for example, diabetes. So once a patient has knowledge, it empower him to make certain decision or to decide on certain solution we have or that we have already seen. So there is a very significant reduction in costs per visit cost, annual costs. There are some studies done by BMJ Global Health which say that it's a huge cost saving per capita saving on health spending. So, so the emphasis of countries, particularly countries in the south, lot of uh, transformation in costs can be done if empowering patient education, not health, we are not talking about health education, but empowering patient education, where Patients are made powerful actor, powerful player in the decision making process. Health education is not enough for empowering a patient. Empowering patient is beyond that. Means patient needs to understand that he can be a positive stakeholder in the, uh, in the health system, in his own care. There are so many things in diabetic that I think 80% of the care outcome depends on how patient behave for treatment. Not just medicine. Medicine have only very limited role. There are a lot of other factors like exercise, like diet. All these require patient knowledge. Regular monitoring. That also require patient knowledge. So, knowledge Taking that patient to a level of empowerment means he or she is able to control his health problem to a significant extent, sorry, because of his or her knowledge. So the, that knowledge empowers that person to make decisions or to choose between different choices. The choices, making decision on the choices or in economic term, purchases. All purchasing has an health, uh, economic implication and the quality of life implication, outcome implication. We go to a restaurant to have a meal. It has a economic as well as it has a health outcome. If you eat well, uh, it could enhance the physical health and can drain the pocket depending on the kind of hotel from where you eat. So the purchasing, where to purchase that, the purchasing decision in healthcare can be significantly influenced by empowering patient education. From where, what services need to be purchased and at what cost? Even cost negotiation, healthcare is the only one industry where there is no negotiation. No bargaining. You cannot bargain anywhere in the world, even in the third world countries, for uh, a less cost. For example, suppose a hospital is providing angioplasty for hundred for five thousand dollars. Patient will never usually bargain for okay, I don't know five thousand. Can you do it for two thousand dollars? So that kind of bargain may not happen. The market uh, controlling of the price, for example, many products, even in European in, in European uh, markets, there are a lot of things. If you buy more, you pay less. If you go to open market, you buy more of anything, you will get a less price. 
but that logic is not applied in healthcare markets because of, of various reasons. There are various reasons. Maybe I can cover that in another lecture. Why in healthcare markets the purchasing is purely controlled by the people who sell? When we go to any other markets, any other thing, the purchase, the one who purchases and spend money has a lot of power to decide on what to purchase. And he can really control the finances. But in healthcare, it's not possible. So empowering patient education can at least start to make patient being able to decide on all these things. Decide on various uh, uh, his or her own healthcare related decision. Keeping in mind the cost. Once you get in, there are many hospitals which is very notorious for highly charging. People say that, that don't go to that hospital, this hospital, because in our context, most of these services are either self-paid or borrowed, paid through borrowing. Because uh, healthcare is one of the main spending which lead many people into poverty. So an attempt to attempt to educate and empower patient will have a lot of effect on poverty reduction in the conduct of uh, lower and middle income countries, where the health spending itself is an is a uh, driver for poverty. There are a lot of studies done by World Bank. There are studies done by many uh, country level uh, ministerial studies which say that a lot of people fall into poverty because of Even there are some studies done during COVID also how far COVID influence in terms of poverty production, poverty, increasing the poverty. So the knowledge has a lot of implications like on the poverty also. So cost advantage of health system, what empowering patients have on the health system. The government allocation to care, how much money that a government spent on uh, health care. For example, in countries like India, we spend nearly 1.2 to 1.3%. And a lot of money, nearly 60 to 65% of the health spending is done by out of pocket means the patient themselves pay. Which will have an effect on, like we have just said, a lot of impact on the poverty. The government allocation to care can significantly impact global health spending because of fewer complications and hospitalization. So there will be less hospitalization, less health spending in publicly funded health system can save a lot of money. Government may not have to spend that much money in terms of managing complications, managing hospitalization. And on the other hand, there will be an economic advantage on increase in the productivity. If, for example, diabetic, a lot of 30 to 40 percent of the diabetic patients are in the working group, in the labor market group. So this high, huge labor force if they don't know how to manage this, it will have an implication on, on the economy, on the other sectors, wherever they work, maybe high morbidity, absence from work, which all will influence the output in terms of economic output and contribution in family. It will also have a lot of influence on the family well then devolution of care, early identification of complications and management of complications. So complication, not only really identifying, but patient should have an information about how this can be managed. So empowering patient education will have a cost advantage on health system because patients themselves are able to manage. And health promotion and empowering patient education as a strategy 
to minimize public spending on healthcare. So it could be in the long run for many economies, many countries, or many health systems. It could be a mainstream strategy. It should be part of the health system where health system can uh, every patient who come to the hospital or it should be also streamlined in terms of probably probably it could be linked to the education department where the important patient education should be a part of the education system where people get to know train become more aware about various options. And a huge advantage to insurance companies. Insurance companies will be very happy because the claims will be less. People are more aware about uh, patient. People are more aware, aware about managing their problem. Reduction in hospital visits. Reduction in hospital visits in public funded or insurance funded, for example, health systems like US where a lot of health spending is uh, spent through insurance companies. Even in Finland, you have uh, private health insurance nowadays coming up and private hospitals coming up. So it will it gives a large advantage, huge advantage to health insurance companies, reduce cost towards hospitalization. People won't end up in hospital with complications because they are well aware about how to manage and how to control the complications. Then finally, budget saving on healthcare allocation. And we have seen this in COVID-19. Many countries which were able to manage COVID very well were the countries which had a very strong public health system. And public health system means where there are, there is a significant amount of knowledge in the community. So, so the advantage, economic advantage of controlling healthcare purchases because of empowering patient education is very huge. Not just at the household level, but every purchasing has also an impact on the economy, on the health system, on insurance companies, even on the families, even on the on the organizations because of so many other associated factors. So the control of purchase can be significantly done by empowering patients, patient education. So patient empowerment strengthen the most appropriate, most economical purchases in healthcare. Empowering knowledge and health expenditure, personal spending. Hospitalization drop, these are some of the studies which have done. Hospitalization drop by 32%. It's a study done on patient education, how patient education influenced the, uh, the other costs. Hospitalized drop in the study, they have seen that 32% of hospitalization has been dropped because of knowledge. Emergency department visit drops by 14%. And usually in many health system, for example, in, in uh, hospitals, like many hospitals in India, many healthcare providers in India, they use ICU or emergency department as a source of making revenue. So it means there are different ways of managing costs or different ways of business models. Where usually even when, uh, because of this, many insurance companies, in, at least in some of the policies, they don't cover the first few days of hospitalization. Because usually first few days of hospitalization will be very high in many contexts because those days will be, probably patient will be put on in ICU with ventilator, with all sort of high-tech equipment. Whatever high-tech equipment are available in the hospital probably will be experimented on this patient. Or, or made available to this patient. So a drop in the emergency visit itself is a huge saving, particularly for insurance companies. 
because sometimes in regulating this by insurance companies also is very difficult unless you have a very strong regulation. But again, even if you have a strong regulation, the decision on the a procedure done on a patient has a lot of rationality by the provider. So unless the patient has a very important, very significant knowledge, he can choose between whether that is really required or not required. So emergency department, emergency department with a drop is means a very significant savings on the healthcare cost. And overall cost also declined by 11%, which is a huge failing for family and health system. So, if we talk about empowering patient education, cost saving driver to patient and health system, this we have already seen, I am just repeating this, reduce revisit to hospitals and the related costs, reduction in hospitalization, reduce medications, low morbidity, even avoiding one hospital visit itself is a huge saving. We have seen that. And publicly funded health system will also have a significant impact on minimizing the costs. There is also a significant impact on the compliance and quality of life. So empowering patient education, we have seen in the first slide about, about the ability to make decision, different option. So usually the dropouts, many studies, even myself has been involved in some of the studies on uh, the poor compliance of TB patients or HIV patients. So we have seen that patients are not part of the decision. This is decided by the provider. Right? For example, if in a hospital, in a restaurant, if you go and someone else orders for you, for example, suppose you went for eating something and the one who pay, you are not paying, somebody else is paying. So if you don't have the option to order your choice, your most preferred food, if that person is ordering the food, probably it may be something very nice, very good, excellent, for that person, but you may not like it. So you may not eat. So the same thing happens in health system, healthcare also. Many choices, with, because it is made by uh, the provider, it is given. The compliance is very poor. This is not only in TB, and we have seen in TB, why TB patients drop after three months or four months of taking drug, even if it is six months, drug, drug given free. Because of this, they, own, they do not own that six month decision. That decision is owned by the doctor or the health system or the, or the hospital. So that decision is not a patient owned decision. So empowering patient education, health, you own a care decision. You are involving patient in the care decision means they are also part of the decision. So better compliance also has significant effects on the quality of life, early healing, limited side effects, early going back to work, and low productivity problem is addressed, means people will start working early. So this has an effect on individual income as well as income of the uh, economy, economic revenue of the, mean the productivity of the economy. Savings on future care expenses. There are many research which point to the quality of life improvement if patients are knowledgeable. A lot of studies are available which relate empowering knowledge with quality of life. Empowering knowledge means patient own decisions. Are they the owners of the decision or somebody else is the owners of it? Who purchases for them? That is why many uh, healthcare services provided free of cost. 
in many countries, in many third world countries, many health, even in many first world countries, many services are given free. Yeah, particularly in, in India or in, in Asian countries, there are a lot of services which are provided fully free, antenatal care services, nutrition services, so many services are there. But these services are not owned by the receiver, the one who consumes. So the consumer don't own that product. Maybe, maybe for the health system, it is something good. For the expert, it is something good. For the doctor, it is very important. But for patient or the user, it is not very important. They are not convinced of the, of the importance of that particular product. So empowering patient education has a very important role in bringing patient on board into the health system. They are not outsiders. They are not consumers. I mean, patient should not be, uh, even in India also, that the consumer, patients are also made as a consumer. But they should be part of the decision making. Part of the system. They are very important stakeholders. They are consumers, but as a consumer, they should know what to consume. That they are like the problem. They are consumer, but they are a, an unknown consumer or unaware consumer. This is empowered, not empowered consumer. Consumer who consume, somebody who give, somebody's uh, on somebody's advice, a consumer purchase or spend money. The economic of patient empowerment it has a horizontal as well as vertical benefits. When we talk about the horizontal benefit, health system, household, and the economy, we have seen this in detail. So there is a parallel economic advantage at all these three different levels: health system in terms of spending for health, households in terms of personal spending for healthcare. And economy in terms of uh, increase in productivity, less days loss. And if you talk about horizontal in terms of productivity, health spending, quality of life. So how the productivity also in, in improves the quality of life, or on or we should say in a larger level in terms of poverty reduction, reducing people who fall into poverty because of health spending. It can be reduced by empowering patient education. So thank you very much for listening to this. In case of any question, you could mail me and this is my email. And also you can reach me uh, through some of the faculties at University of Turku. And I should uh, thank the Department of Nursing Science for giving me this opportunity and hope you all enjoyed this course and I look forward for your feedback, comments, questions in case any. And finally, this is a very important area where probably the, it should be, it should bring to the level of the health policy where empowering patient education should be part of the healthcare intervention. So probably in your respective countries or together by doing some studies on how the patient empowerment can minimize the spending by household, spending by health system, we could uh, negotiate with governments, insurance companies to make this a product which should be delivered to every patient. So this empowering patient education could be transformed into a product for patient. So I think with all your support and with all your effort, we could think about doing a multi-country study, multi-country analysis, which will help us to give more light into how patient empowerment can influence the cost. Thank you very much.